When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, aka Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today, we're slicing through another claim from Eric Dubay's 200 Proofs, Earth is not a spinning ball. This time it's number 106, where he talks about the South Pole. Dubay claims, the so-called South Pole is simply an arbitrary point along the Antarctic ice marked with a red and white barbershop pole topped with a metal ball earth. This ceremonial South Pole is admittedly and provably not the actual South Pole, however, because the actual South Pole could be demonstrably confirmed with the aid of a compass showing north to be 360 degrees around the observer. Since this feat has never been achieved, the model remains pure theory along with the establishment's excuse that the geomagnetic poles supposedly constantly move around making verification of their claims impossible. Okay, let's unravel this one. First up, yes, there is indeed a ceremonial South Pole that is marked by a rather picturesque red and white pole topped with a metallic globe. It's a photogenic spot surrounded by the flags of the original Antarctic treaty signatory nations, and yes, it is used primarily for photo ops and ceremonies. This is what most people see in pictures when tourists visit when they say they've been to the South Pole. But here's where Dubay's narrative starts to fall apart. Dubay's claim hinges on the implication that because the ceremonial pole isn't the real South Pole, something fishy must be going on, like there's no actual South Pole. But the true geographic South Pole is indeed a real, scientifically established location. It's the precise point where the Earth's axis of rotation intersects its surface in the southern hemisphere. But here's the thing. It moves. Why? Because the ice on which it sits shifts about 10 meters each year due to the glacial flow. Because of this movement, the exact geographic South Pole is recalculated and marked anew each year on New Year's Day in a small ceremony by the personnel at the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station. The marker for the actual geographic pole is not as flashy as a ceremonial one. It's just a simple sign or disc on the ice, redesigned each year by the winter crew. So, when Dubay says the ceremonial pole is admittedly and provably not the actual South Pole, he is technically... <laughs> technically correct, but misleading. Admitting this doesn't expose a conspiracy. It highlights a practical solution to the natural phenomenon, the movement of the ice. The ceremonial pole provides a stable, recognizable location for ceremonies and photos, while the true pole is marked scientifically for accuracy. If you were conducting scientific measurements, would you plant your instruments where you know the ground itself would move significantly every year, or would you measure the exact location annually, ensuring your data corresponds to the true rotational axis? Scientists, unlike Dubay, choose accuracy. Dubay's claim deliberately confuses the ceremonial with the actual to sow doubt. This is a common tactic. Take something that is both true and innocuous and twist it into something to imply a deception. The rest of the claim that this is not the South Pole because the actual South Pole could be demonstrably confirmed with the aid of a compass showing north to be 360 degrees around the observer simply shows Dubay's ignorance of the difference between the geographic poles and the magnetic poles. Surveyors don't use compasses to find the geographic south pole because it's in a different location than a magnetic pole. Surveyors use GPS receivers to determine the exact coordinates of the pole, taking into account the Earth's shape, it's not a perfect sphere, and the movement of the ice. Now, I'm not going to ignore the fact that Dubay acknowledges the accepted model's position on the magnetic poles but he does call their movement and thus their being in different locations than the geographic poles an excuse. Does Dubay not acknowledge that the 
northern magnetic pole is not in the same location as the northern geographic pole? He and other globe deniers claim the North Pole is the only true pole and that's why we can go there. Yet no flat earther has ever or will ever go there to confirm that the magnetic North Pole is there. But he does like to make South Pole claims like 107. Ring magnets of the kind found in loudspeakers have a central North Pole with the opposite South Pole actually being all points around the outer circumference. This perfectly demonstrates the magnetism of our flat Earth, whereas the alleged source of magnetism in the ball Earth model is admitted, emitted from a hypothetical molten magnetic core in the center of a ball, which they claim conveniently causes both poles to constantly move, thus evading independent verification at their two ceremonial poles. In reality, the deepest drilling operation in history, the Russian Kola Ultra Deep, managed to get only eight miles down. So the entire ball earth model taught in schools showing a crust, outer mantle, inner mantle, outer core, and inner core layers are all purely speculation as we have never penetrated beyond the crust. I'm just going to briefly touch on the fact that Dubay is completely ignoring the entire science of seismology. Much like they claim you can only tell the shape of the earth by looking out in front of you, Globe deniers seem to think the only way to learn the interior structure of the Earth is to dig down into it. For those who are curious, just do what Dubay refused to do. Go to Google and type in Seismology Earth Interior. Now, ring magnets. The problem you have with your ring magnet claim, Eric, well, one of your problems, we'll get to another later, is that a ring magnet with a central north pole and the opposite south pole actually being all points around the outer circumference does not exist in nature. And the ring magnets you speak of are just a collection of standard dipole magnets configured in a unique way so that the magnetic field takes that shape. And though you could claim, well, the ring magnet of the Earth is the one that occurs in nature, it can't explain another problem that I will be presenting shortly. But first, let's deal with number 108, because once again, Eric is making magnetic pole claims. Number 108, the Mariner's Compass is an impossible and nonsensical instrument for use on a ball Earth. It simultaneously points north and south over a flat surface, yet claims to be pinpointing two constantly moving geomagnetic poles at opposite ends of a spinning sphere originating from a hypothetical molten metal core. If compass needles were actually drawn to the north pole of a globe, the opposing south needle would actually be pointing up and off into outer space. Here, globe deniers like Dubay show they don't know how compasses work. Compasses are not drawn to the north pole of a globe. Well, they are not only drawn to the north pole of a globe. They are drawn to the south pole as well. A compass needle is magnetic, and it doesn't only have one pole. One end is drawn to the North Pole and the other to the South Pole. And because of that, it aligns itself with the magnetic field lines of the Earth. The closer a compass gets to the North Pole, the stronger the northern influence, the more the magnetic field lines point downward and the needle dips down on the northern side. The opposite happens near the South Pole. So compasses are built with that in mind, separated into zones according to different locations on the globe, and compasses for each zone are weighted in such a way as to keep them from dipping so much that they point up and off into outer space. Years ago, I did a video explaining this, and I also have a video with a compass that has been zoned for Australia. That was sent to me by YouTuber Critical Think. Links are in the description. Okay, now let me follow up on the other problem Dubai and all globe deniers have to deal with when they try to make these claims about a southern magnetic pole being a ring or anything like that. If the southern magnetic pole were a ring beyond Antarctica, then it would not be possible for someone in, say, a plane to fly beyond the south magnetic pole. Yet that is precisely what I and Critical Think did when we took our Antarctic tour flight back in 2019. Back then, according to the National Centers for Environmental Information, and the British Geological Survey, the Southern Magnetic Pole was located at about 64.5 degrees south and 
136.6 degrees east. That puts it about right here on the globe. Now, the flight that Critical Think and I took went on this path here. This is the data taken from the GPS device I used on the flight. As you can see, there is a point at which we are beyond the magnetic south pole. Now, if this was all I had as evidence, you could dismiss what I was saying. But looking at this information here, we could come up with a prediction. And that prediction would be something like this. If a person had a standard compass with them and they were traveling along this path, at some point around here, even though they are still traveling south geographically, the compass would read that they are traveling west. Correct? Can you see how that would be? The compass would think that this is south. So the direction of travel would be magnetically west. Now, if I only had a visual record of that happening. Well, recently I found a stash of recordings that I had taken during the flight that I had misplaced. So here I'm going to play a couple of minutes of what occurred on that flight. It's three short recordings. I will split the screen with the GPS position of the flight at the time of the recordings. This will be uploaded in 4K, so go full screen to get a good look at both sides. Okay, it is 12.15 um, p.m. Uh, we are four, a little over four hours in. We're just about to cross over the, uh, the ice shelf, uh, probably in about um, a half hour to 40 minutes wanted to show you what was going on with the with the compasses right now. Um, first, uh, it's an interesting thing going on. So first, I want to show you uh, the, the readouts from the Bad Elf uh, GPS, and then what's going on with the compasses. And then later on, uh, I'll try to decipher it uh, on another video uh, to see what this actually means when I compare it to the, the actual GPS. But let's look at what's going on here. Okay, so we have the, the Bad Elf GPS going here saying our current uh, airspeed of 546, uh, 29, almost 30,000 feet up, and we're going south-southwest at 199 degrees. Now, so let's look at the, uh, the compasses. So, the compasses are reading that as north, um, as you can still see, um, our Northern Hemisphere one is, is still banging and pointing up. Uh, this one is actually uh, doing okay at this third global one, but they're all still going in the same uh, general direction. But if you can look at the way they're pointing north, given the direction that we are going. Now, um, later on I'll compare what that actually means, but uh, that's very, uh, that's, that's very interesting. Okay. I'm going to get very close to this, just so you can hear me over this guy's uh, PA system. The footage of the compass uh, shows that we have gone past the South Magnetic Pole, which planet makers uh, say doesn't exist. So the fact that we're still going uh, technically in this, we're going in the same direction, but we are now magnetically going directly west, means we have passed the South Magnetic Pole. Uh, I'll be able to check this against the GPS later on, but I just wanted to get that information out there. So, as you can see, as we went past the magnetic south pole, the standard compasses, all three of them, read as if we were going west, as would be expected with a globe Earth and a singular magnetic south pole, and not a ring that we can't go beyond. So if Eric Dubay and other globe deniers want to claim that there is no singular south magnetic pole, I have one question I would like them to answer. Where the hell was I? Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.